the former independent senator of the beautiful state of Connecticut, of course, uh, ran for vice president of the United States back in 2000. Senator, um, this back and forth uh, of, 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 on these races, and particularly the runoff battle going on in Georgia, uh, if those polls stay where they are, and anything could and likely will change, and the Democrats pull both races out, um, that's a whole new ball game, isn't it? Uh, yeah, uh, Neil, <clears throat> great to be with you as always. So uh, it is a whole new ball game. Matter of fact, uh, a lot of the ball game of, of the next two years is on the line in Georgia, uh, early in January in these runoffs, because uh, obviously these two races will determine whether the Senate is a Republican. So there's one House controlled by another party than the White House and the House, or whether the Democrats uh, control the Senate and uh, they, they basically are in control of the whole of the federal government. It doesn't mean Joe Biden is going to get everything he wants, but it, but it means it's going to be a lot uh, easier. And uh, I was surprised by the recent polling in Georgia that showed the two Democratic uh, candidates ahead, because the history is, as Steve Harrigan said, that uh, Republicans win special elections in Georgia. But I think two things are happening. One is the state is changing, witness the fact that Joe Biden carried Georgia. And the second is, right. I think all the, this is intuitive more than scientific, I think all the tumult around uh, President Trump n not acknowledging that he's uh, lost his bid for re-election may not be helping those two Republican candidates for the Senate in Georgia. So I think Chuck Grassley, uh, as always, gave pretty sound uh, advice to President Trump about what he should do this weekend. You know, uh, the Wall Street Journal kind of echoed what you just said, Senator, this morning, saying Mr. Trump is already sounding like he wants to run again in 2024, and his stolen election claims sound like an opening bid for campaign donations. At least for now, he could say with justification that he helped the GOP gain seats in the House and avoid a rout in the Senate. But that narrative changes for the worse. If the GOP loses in Georgia and Mr. Trump divided his own party to serve his own political interests, he needs a GOP Senate nearly as much as Mitch McConnell does. What do you think of that? Well, I, I couldn't agree more with what the journal says. I, I'm, uh, the, the Republicans don't need me to give them advice. Certainly the president doesn't. But uh, this is and what's happening in Georgia about Georgia. It's not about uh, President Trump or the presidential uh, election count. Uh, it's really about who's going to control the Senate. And that's pretty important yeah. to uh, country over the next two years. So uh, it, it ain't over till it's over. But I think the Democrats have more of a chance to carry at least one and maybe both of these Senate seats than we would have guessed just a week or two ago. Yeah, it's looking that way. But like you said, it's way too early to tell. But, uh, Senator, I don't know if you had a chance to catch uh, Joe Biden's comments last night on CNN. Uh, but the whole issue of whether the president should concede, uh, will concede, uh, came up. And, and about the importance of the, the, the president being at, at Joe Biden's inauguration, while he seemed to dismiss it for himself personally, he thinks it's good for the country. Um, that he'd be there. I hope I got that right. I think that's the gist of it. What do you think of that? That no matter how yeah. President Trump feels, if it turns out that these legal options have all failed, he's still bitter, he's still angry, um, but he, 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 he shouldn't be petty about it. He should show up before the inauguration of, of Joe Biden, if for nothing more to show the continuity of our system. Yeah, I totally agree with what uh, President-elect Biden had to say. Incidentally, uh, I, I did see it last night. I do occasionally watch a cable news network other than Fox networks, but very rarely. <laughs> you are forgiven, uh, forgiven just this <laughs> once, just this once. Thank you. You're very merciful. Uh, I, I thought Joe Biden was right. And honestly, uh, we all know how um, disappointed, angry, convinced that the, uh, uh, President Trump is that he got cheated out of this victory. But the courts don't to be, are not siding with that. That's the, that's the way we resolve conflicts yeah. here. Uh, it's going to be hard for him, but there's no question that for the country it would be better uh, if he and his wife were at the inauguration of Joe Biden. They, they don't have to endorse him, but they're there really for America that, that he I know loves, that he, Donald Trump, loves. And he can go on to do whatever he wants to do after that. Now, look, if he doesn't come and, and his wife don't, doesn't come, uh, it's uh, the inauguration will go forward. Joe Biden's going to be our next president. Uh, it really is time 
for President Trump to acknowledge that if he's thinking about running in 2024, well, that's four years down the road and he can begin to do that. But, but I think it's time to put the country first, as uh, President Trump has said, and one big way to do that uh, would be for him to attend the inauguration of his successor. All right. We'll see what happens. Uh, we'll take an under and over on the odds of all of that happening. Senator, uh, have a wonderful holiday. Uh, be healthy. Be well. Uh, Joe Lieberman, the former vice presidential candidate, of course, uh, multi-term senator from the beautiful state of Connecticut.